Reporting in service, starting mileage 9835, 9835. 156, mileage 9835, 6 p.m. Unit 560 in service on the night watch. This is Don Reed, a police recorder. Right now, you're riding in Detective Unit 56, and that was Sergeant Ron Perkins just reporting us in service on the night watch. While you're with us tonight, remember. I'm recording this as it happens. And the people you meet are not actors. You see, this is it. This is real. This is Nightwatch. Nightwatch. The actual on-the-scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors. There is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We switch you now to Detective Unit 56, somewhere in the field, and to police recorder Don Reed. Five six to one. Now we're at Overland and Washington Place. We've got a two fourteen here in front of the bar. Will you send a uniform unit down here, code two? Oh, one to five six ten four. Car five zero at Overland and Washington Place. Two fourteen in the street. Meet detective here at five six code two. Well, we have a two fourteen fight going uh, just across the street in front of a bar. Uh, five two to control one. Uh, we're right on top of this two fourteen call. You want us to take it? Control one to five two ten four. A car 5 will cancel. 5 2 will handle. Things are moving very fast. We're right in the middle of the highway waiting for a break in the traffic. Now we got it swinging around. We have a clear shot here now. Heading back. That uniform car that just radioed in is pulling up to the curb. We're swinging in behind. Here's the quick picture two men, two women pushing each other around. Things are getting a little rough right here. The uniformed officer, Al Arnold, and his partner waiting into the argument. We're in plain clothes. Psychologically, it's best for the uniform boys to handle. Wait. We'll stand by just in case things get out of hand. No, you won't. I you will. Know you won't. Please I will. Don't. I won't take that from anybody. Don't. Now, come on. Now. You'll be over no. tomorrow. Wait, Please. Just hold everything, will you? What's trouble? He, d- he just called me scum. No. He said I was more than a snake. Well, I have worked in this bar for five years. Well, that's what hurts your pride. See? And I have never... Coming back out here. Look, you know what you're mad at? And he got me fired from working. You didn't get fired, I'll bet you. I'll you... sign a complaint, okay? No. You know you'll be working here next week. All Look, right, I'll they... sign a complaint just because I won't put up with him. You've had more insults than these guys ever gave you. Not, not... You know, you're never... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's break this up. We're not going to have the argument on the side. Which one of you called her the name? Well, you've been drinking, you know that. I have not. I'll bet you have. I'll take a sobriety test against you any time. All right. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Because I bought it. Why get her mad, though? Don't get anybody mad. You never bought me a drink in your life, and you know it. What's the difference? Well, Well, then then why make a statement? May I ask you a question? What do you got to do with the argument? Nothing. Well, play. It's my buddy. Well, I don't enter a thing. The argument's between the young lady and this fella. Now, I just advise you to keep out of it. Now, take some advice. And you too, fella. Will you please keep We'll try to settle this without a problem. Just be on your way. Get him over here. Ask the policeman here what I said. Well, I'm not asking the policeman. I'm asking you. Well, yeah, I said I, I, I said a bad name. I apologize. And she did you apologize to her? Yes, I did. And, and then what did you walk up to the bar and say to me? Well, about what? You said that I was lower than scum. After Make what you said to me, did I'm I not, not apologize to you? Tell me the truth. I'll tell the truth. I did. Did I apologize to you before you said it to me? I'm really sorry. I apologize to you. I'm sorry for it. I'm still sorry for it. I didn't mean to say it. That's sorry. Sorry. Yeah. All, the, all together, she walked out of here. We, well, we no, she mad tonight. Yeah. We'll 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 Control One is calling us on the radio. Okay. Let's get over to our car. We're just glancing back. The uh, uniformed officers have settled this little discussion. The man is heading north and the woman south. That takes care of that. Uh, five and six, we were out of the car. Uh, go ahead. Uh, one to five and six, are you clear? Five and six, roger. Control one to five and six. Unit five three has been dispatched to 2931 Ingersoll Place. 
to see the woman about a possible assault. This is near your present location. Uh, will you follow up? Uh, five, six to one, Roger. Uh, you might tell five, three will be there in a couple of minutes. I uh, one to five, three. Detective unit five, six, rolling. Well, this seems to be our night for assaults. Thinking of that woman heading south, it'd be interesting to know what she called that fellow. On second thought, maybe we better skip it. When we uh, get through this next signal and skip over a couple of side streets, we'll be there. Apparently, there isn't uh, a rush on this call, or Control 1 would have given us a code. Uh, that is uh, something like code 2, roll with your red light, or code 3, get that siren. Anyway, apparently there's not too much rush, but it should be right up here about the next block. Can't be too far ahead. In fact, here comes our uniform car from the opposite direction. See there's spotlight searching out the numbers along the street. Apparently is up here just a couple hundred yards. That's unit 5-3 up there that's stopped. And... Uh, we're going to pull right in, right in front of them. Here we are. The uh, crew, officers Good and Cameron, are going to investigate the trouble. It's a small bungalow, middle-aged man and woman waiting for us. Man holding his face. Well, let's see what the reason for this is. So he come in the store. We were watching television. He knocked at the door. My husband opened the door. And his wife came in. They had both been drinking. And uh, my husband, he said something about, why do you pick on my wife every time she's in the yard? And then he did. He up and slapped my hand across the mouth. Well, did you just wait? I did. Right here. You asked us all the I absolutely did. Well, his wit was not And then I said, that's what it was. There's no more trouble with you. And I got to see. They both came in here, and he just argued, and I said, well, why do you pick on my wife all the time? Why don't you come and kill me, see? He just took his hand right across the face there. Did he knock any teeth? And no. Uh, uh, he just like to just... But, you know, it's not that. Why? There's no reason. I don't know why. I said, why don't you pick on her? Every time she was out of the car, you know? Do you want to find a complaint against this person, sir? Oh. Well, well, yes. Yeah. Find a Yeah, find him and have him on file up there. And the next time you're going to file, it's not a matter of being on file. It's a matter of, if you find a complaint against him, he'll be served with a warrant and put in jail. If there's some way we can have him know to let us even come over here one time, drunk, him and her, and they call me dirty names. Well, I'll tell you, we can advise this person on the seriousness of it, of the assault. And chances are he'll never try this again. But if you want to sign a complaint against this person, uh, you can find it in the district attorney's office, and chances are the warrant will be served, and this man will be put in jail and tried. Well, when can you, you tell him? Well, if, if you want it that way, yes, ma'am. Well, if you, if you don't have press charges, then we'll make a full, just make a verbal advisory. That's right. I want him to know that if you don't give me a warrant, I'm going to take action. I've told him that, but he don't seem to need it. Well, we're going to talk to him. There's no reason he has over this loan. That's right. Well, so, you know, you're in a position now where you can go up, oh, well. sign a complaint against him for assault. And we don't want no problem. We live here. We stay in our own place. We keep our dogs That's what I told him. Other people don't you. Why are you blaming us? He's in the back there. If anything else like this ever happens, I want you to give us a call. We will. I intend to do it. We'll let him know now that it's a serious matter when he goes around. Well, thank you. Okay, you got it. The victim doesn't wish to sign a complaint, so we'll just advise the other couple. Two very large, great Dane dogs blocking the door. Gosh, I've seen ponies smaller than these fellas. Well, here are the two participants in the quarrel. Man and wife, both middle-aged, 50s, heavy set. Each armed with a bottle of beer. And the woman struggling with one dog. The other is in the process of bowling the other. <laughs> well, the woman and one officer is wrestling one of the dogs, a big fellow. The other is trying very playfully to remove my coat sleeve with my arm in it. <laughs> Don't. Don't it's every man for himself. Trying to 
Get him in the bedroom. Well, now let's see what it's all about. Is your husband the gentleman that uh, struck your neighbor next door? Well, I don't. Well, now here's the situation. We got a call in here and an assault. You want to come back here, sir? We're talking to you. You go over next door here and hit this man that's off the face of the back of your hand? I did not. I know. I heard the score. I've been doing it. No, no, he don't. Well, people are ready to sign a complaint against him. You start seeing your own argument and run alone. Understand? I understand. You're not supposed to, when someone's else's house, especially when they've been drinking, go out and smack a guy across the face. That's a good way to end up Are you accusing me of that, sir? I'm telling you what the gentleman next door told us. He happens to have a witness to the fact that it happened. His wife. We were in the house, yes. What happened tonight? Well, my husband rang the doorbell. And I came behind. And she came out, and then she said, well, she grabbed the key, she said, come on, go, let's go get the cops. I make the next call. Let me wait just a minute. No. We'll make the next no. call. Listen. No, honey. These officers just went next door and talked to that side and heard their side of the story. They want to hear your side of the story here. Perhaps I was wrong. You didn't hit him, though. You didn't hit him with the back. I did not. Well, sir, you might as well tell us, because they're not prepping charges of you at this time, and they're going to be very fair about it. So you have no reason to lie to us in any way, because we're not going to harm you. Did you push him? We just want to keep the peace. <clears throat> well, that's what I want to do, is keep the peace. Where have you been drinking tonight, sir? There? In my home. I have never drank any place but my home. Well, did you no, drink? Did you lay hands on him? I did not. I, I did not lay hands. No, he's not there. Why would they call the police? <laughs> Ask. Ask the person who is trying to cut us shut. Well, these officers came down here with interest in keeping the peace, keeping people quiet. Yes. If they have a return call down here, then they're going to do something about it. Well, why well, can't I turn around and make a call and call you gentlemen down, down here? Under well, the same circumstances. Yeah, the present time you're drunk and intoxicated. I'm in my home. Doesn't make any difference. You're creating a disturbance. Yes, sir. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. That you can go to jail, despite the fact you're in your own home. Yes, sir. So if these officers come down here and return and call, somebody's going to jail. And if I hear there any time that I cannot call them at, uh, at 3 o'clock this morning, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll call. And uh, will, you, will you give them the same courtesy that you're giving me? If they have, you have a legitimate reason to call the police, the police will answer the call. The, 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 the word that goes on. Sir, do you think because they gave you a break, you might give them a break and stay away from there? Well, well when did they give me a break? Well, they give you the break, they're not signing a complaint at this time for a second. Well, I just assume that they sign a complaint because I'll, uh, if they want to dig me, I'll dig them. Well, you're in no position to do anything at the present time. You're intoxicated. Yeah, we're they're not willing. They don't want to sign a complaint. The only thing they want is to be left alone over there. Same, same respect you people want to be left alone. There, there. Now, Daddy. So you think that you can stay here and keep quiet, and they'll stay over there and keep quiet, okay? I will really not promise that. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We come down here again, somebody's going to jail. And chances are it'll be you, sir, because you're the intoxicated one. Get him I'll be in control of them. Now, I'll be in control of them. Listen, I've been married to him for 23 years. Just keep it quiet here and let people quiet and let it be happy. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Bye. Heading back now to our radio unit. Situation is pretty well cleared up. Well, they were sure a couple of big dogs, weren't they? Yeah. It's the first time I ever wrestled one that outweighed me. <laughs> Six to control one. Uh, clear on the assault call. Advised. Five three has a report. Control one to five six. Roger. Five six. Will you meet the captain's unit five zero at three six zero one Barbara? They have a burglary suspect in custody. Request you contact them at once. Five six. Roger. We're rolling. Listening to Night Watch, 
and following the activities of a detective unit on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real, and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. Can you spare $10 to help feed a family of four for a month? If you can, send it to CARE, together with your name and address and that of some needy relative or friend in Europe or Israel, India, Pakistan, Japan, Okinawa, or the Philippines. CARE will do the rest and guarantee delivery. The address is simply CARE. CARE, New York. CARE is the sure, economical way to send food and clothing abroad. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6, somewhere in the field, and your police recorder, Don Reed. Moving into the location where one of our units has a burglary suspect in custody. Here's the picture. Uniform car parked at curb. Suspect in the back. Arms behind him. Apparently handcuffed. We got him in custody over here. We're going to take him out. Suspect for a few minutes. He admits breaking into the building, all right, but uh, says he just wanted to use a phone. You want to take him with your juvenile? I want to know. Well, take him, take him, and then we'll talk to him when we get down to the station. Suspect is not a juvenile. Victims waiting for us. Captain Lugo checking over a port the uniformed officer. Can you tell us what happened? Well, uh, all we know is when we came to the door, it was bolted, you see. We couldn't use that lock. And uh, then we heard someone in here, and we could hear him moving in here while he was trying to get this thing down. Trying to get well, out of the building. Getting out of the building. I told her, I said, there's somebody in here. And then we could hear them. Was he, was he trying to get out of the window when you came in? Is that... We don't know. And uh, he said that he was. He said the window was open when we came back. Was he over here by the window trying to get out? Well, the window was open. We have closed it since. Well, and he took this down. You didn't did leave it open yourself. No. In other oh, words, no. he, he, he did this himself. Uh-huh. Well, the way it stands now, he's been taken to the police station. He's going to be booked for suspicion of burglary. And the investigation will reveal whatever it may. Uh-huh. So it'll just have to take its course. Uh-huh. Okay? Uh-huh. Fine. Just whatever. Over uh, next to the windows. Take these along. Take your burner tools. Sergeant Perkins gathering up a bunch of tools used by the suspect to pry open the window. Hammer, screwdriver, crowbar. Uh, give it to Perkins. The uh, captain wants to check out the address. Yeah, we'll do. Perk, use the uh, suspect's name and address. Oh, good. Let's go over and shake his house. Okay, I'm with you. You are? Then you won't mind help carry these tools. Oh, you? wait a minute. This isn't in my contract. Six to one on this four five nine call. We're going over to check out the suspect's house. Uh, we hold him in the detention room, and we'll talk to him as soon as we get to the station. One to five six ten four. We'll advise the booking sergeant. KMA three nine four. floor. That's a modest apartment building. Number two. It's this one here on the left-hand side. Hello. We're from the police department. I think we have your son in jail. Can we come in and talk to you a minute, please? Okay. To you. Mother motioning us in. We, uh, we caught him in a building tonight <clears throat> up in Culver City. And uh, 
we wanted to come down here. If your permission, kind of look things over and see if he has anything that he shouldn't have. You mean among his bonds? Yes, ma'am. You can sit down if you want, ma'am. I'll be all right. It's very shocking to me. He tells us that uh, he was trying to make a long-distance telephone call to his sister. In this particular case, and he's committed a felony so he could make a telephone call if his story is... Well, I have a daughter in New York, of course. We'd just like to look around if we may. We'd like to have you with us just to see if there's anything more that... uh, I don't think there is, but you can come along. We'd like to look at his bedroom more than anything else. Uh, I'll explain the situation a little bit. Right next door to us, they've had a number of thefts of automobiles. Well, if there's any automobile parts or anything like that, that's... Into the suspect's bedroom. This is the only bag that he has. I wouldn't feel my boyfriend if he wrong about anything. Well, just... I'm very much shocked about it. Here's... Uh, pardon me. Sure. Uh, this is his clothes here. Just the usual assortment. Pretty much routine. Have you, has your son ever been in any trouble at all? No, he hasn't. Never. He never has. Would he, uh, do you suppose he'd have any particular reason for going into this building to make a phone call instead of maybe making it a pay phone or I something couldn't like tell that? You that? I can't understand why he would do a thing like that. I really can't tell you. He might have been trying to get in touch with my girl. Is there any, uh, uh, your boys are real pretty truthful and... He always has been. How old is he? Uh, He's 25. 25. Thank you very much, ma'am. We're going back to the station and talk to your son. Good night. In front of me is a two-way mirror. And looking into the interrogation room, Sergeant Perkins is on the phone, running a record check. Suspect is sitting at the desk, nervously trying to light a cigarette. Nice-looking young fellow, crew cut, horn-rimmed glasses. Now let's uh, move on into the office. That's about all we'll need. Thanks very much. Okay, good night. All right, now let's have the straight story. What were you doing in that building? I want to go back to New York to speak to my sister. And just as I was starting to use the phone, they drove up, and I got nervous and locked the door because I knew I wasn't supposed to be in there. Did you have permission to go into the building? No, I didn't. What were you going to do, uh, make a long-distance call on their phone? Yes, I was. Charge it to them? No, I wasn't. Well, how were you going to pay for it? I'd give them the money. When? In the morning? No, when I got paid. Well, do you have an emergency call to make to uh, to the No, I just wanted to speak to my sister. You have a phone at your house? I have a phone at my apartment. They didn't even plan Lady's apartment. But she doesn't like people to be using it for long-distance telephone calls. Well, you had no business in that building, other I know I didn't. I know I'll admit that. Were you going to go out the window? I was trying to see if I could go. Do you realize what uh, what you've done tonight? Yes, I did. a felony just to make a telephone call? I know I did. Taking a chance of getting shot? Yes, I know. It's awful stupid and idiotic. What disgrace upon your folks? I know. You're both now on a charge of burglary. The illegal entering of a building without the owner's permission. Mm-hmm. Do you want the penalty of burglary calls for? No, sir, I don't. Well, section 459 of the Penal Code is two types of burglary. Burglary in the first degree and in the second degree. First degree is committed by a person armed with a deadly weapon which you were not armed with. And all other types of burglaries were, are considered as second degree. Burglary in the second degree is punishable by imprisonment in the county jail not exceeding one year or in the state prison for not less than one or more than 15 years. So you stand by making a foolish phone call. You stand to make 15 minutes, I guess. It's a long time for a phone call.
what you have just heard is real. Recorded as it actually happened on The Night Watch. And now back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. As you followed our officers on the tour of Night Watch tonight, you can see the diversified problems that come up in police work. In the first case, for example, two families quarreling was settled by merely advising that a reoccurrence of tonight's events could result in the subjects being arrested. The second investigation, the couple arguing on the street, likewise received a similar warning. In the final case of the suspect trapped in the building, he was booked on suspicion of burglary, which carries a sentence of not less than five years in the state prison. However, there were extenuating circumstances which the arresting officers included in their report and which the court took into consideration. The suspect was given a suspended sentence and placed on a two-year probation. We are recording our investigations as they happen on the night watch to show you a police investigation may turn up the evidence to prove a person guilty or by the same token may clear a suspect of any complicity with a crime. As a peace officer for 29 years, I've come to one conclusion. Police work is much more enjoyable when you help the innocent than when you prosecute the guilty. I hope in a small way this will help you understand our problems as you ride each week on the Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the -the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch, brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hadlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed. <laughs>